agencies across government have a two and a half year deadline to implement zero trust architectures. Those agencies have specific cybersecurity standards and objectives to hit by the end of fiscal year 2024. I'm Francis Rose from the Scoop News Group. Cherry and Sivignanam is Chief Enterprise Architect at the National Science Foundation. Cherry and welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. What are your short term goals, maybe over the next year or so, and your long term goals regarding zero trust to hit that fiscal 2024 deadline? Welcome. Good morning. And uh, Francis, it's a pleasure to be with you today. And thank you for inviting me to this video series. Um, at the National Science Foundation, uh, we are building the zero trust architecture with a two pronged approach. Um, in the short run, we are accelerating on a couple of key priority projects. Uh, the number one, uh, we are implementing a digital identity with increased focus on human-centered design. This is to transform from the traditional identity management model to a phishing resistant multi-factor authentication. Now, when we do this, we are not compromising on customer experience because that's really the key here. And number two, uh, we are implementing the next generation network security uh, that secures the agency's multi-cloud infrastructure, including platform as a service, uh, software as a service and shared service, because these are the next generation cloud infrastructure that, that are tough to be confined within a network uh, level security or a traditional network security architecture. So we are looking at implementing secure access service edge and cloud-based security brokers. So those are like a couple of the short, short run projects. But in the long run, and, and, and what we are really um, trying to do is we are beginning to invest in developing protected apps so apps can really operate on uh, platform independent or infrastructure independent um, are abstracted from this infrastructure and um, abstracted from the network layer. So it's really a true zero trust architecture framework. And, and the second one we are really working on is the top priority pretty much for everybody. It's really upscaling our agency staff on cybersecurity. Because uh, in my, um, observation and opinion, there are two uh, key assets to an, any organization, data and people. And people are the weakest link in when, when it comes to protecting the data. So we want to really bring more awareness and enlighten the staff handling agency data and information technology. You've got a number of different silos, parallels, channels there, however, whatever term you want to use, Cherry. And how do you uh, how do you do all of the things that you want to do when you've got a number of different complexities, a number of different layers there? Sure, it's a very interesting question. Um, so first, uh, National Science Foundation is a single mission agency. Our mission is to really promote science research across the nation. Uh, when it comes to our central IT, uh, we have just one network, but multiple uh, functional silos. Uh, so the, to tackle these silos, we have uh, developed a common architecture that integrates the IT services across the silos. Um, this architecture uh, includes all the cybersecurity components to enforce the five zero trust uh, principles or pillars, in other words, you want to call them. Um, it is integrated into our change management process, such as uh, the DevSecOps, uh, end user management. This is where you now we are really looking at uh, laptops management, uh, um, the virtual desktops, so or the mobile device management. So the end user management is very critical as we go into this hybrid and distributed world. And we have also integrated this into our cloud ops. You know, the DevSecOps really focuses on applications, but the cloud ops is much broader. How we manage our infrastructure in the multi-cloud environment, and finally the most important part, which is the data ops. So it's the whole zero trust architecture is a data centric philosophy, uh, data centric architecture. So we want to really focus from the data in the middle. So the data ops is also part of this whole uh, evolution. So that's how we are really marching forward with our implementation. Now you mentioned all of the, the elements of the zero trust uh, executive order and all of that that you uh, have to fulfill. How do you go about structuring what you're doing, Cherry, and so that it becomes a cybersecurity hardening exercise and not a compliance check the box exercise? So Francis, uh, this is a very interesting way to look at, you know, for the past several decades, 
Uh, if you really look at federal IT infrastructure, how it has evolved, it has evolved with a data center centric mindset. Uh, so organizations, okay, again, this is just based on my understanding. Organizations that implement the zero trust solutions today with this mindset continue to persist in them, most likely are gonna lead into a checkbox set of exercise. But to be more effective and efficient, this mindset has to change with the data-centric thinking. It will allow organizations to truly embrace the zero trust principles. What do you see moving forward as the way that you're going to kind of, you mentioned the five pillars of, of zero trust as well. There's opportunities for automation, I imagine. You want to make this kind of uh, a, a collaboration. You don't want to do e work on each of these five pillars individually. What do you see as the opportunities there, Cherian? Yeah, so at the foundation, we track high priority projects with a monthly uh, program review chaired by our chief information officer. Um, it includes uh, the CISO, chief security officer, chief architect, and other, st other stakeholders, like you know the program managers. Uh, the program managers are expected to report progress across the, the five pillars in a templated format. In addition, we have implemented an engineering review board as part of our change authorization process to get deeper in, insight into uh, projects like Zero Trust and Cloud Migration. So if you really look at these processes and the program managers leverage multiple techniques to bring insight to the leadership, such as analytics, orchestration, um, cloud native techniques to provide, uh, you know, the, the cloud, you know, various layers of the cloud, you know, sometimes it's software as a service, infrastructure as a service. So we have to look at each one of this from a different angle. So, so we are really using cloud native techniques and uh, that analytics that comes out of it and orchestration that comes out of it to provide this deeper insight to the leadership. Terry, and great insight to what you're doing at National Science Foundation. It's great to have you with me today. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Francis. I appreciate it.